Ghostly tales, yet mirrors of human life. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Encountering Chinese. Ghostly tales from Liao Zhai. Today, I'm going to tell you a story called Dong Shesi. There was a scholar surnamed Dong whose courtesy name was Shesi. He hailed from the western part of Qingzhou. One winter evening, as night fell, Dong Shesi prepared to rest at home. He neatly spread the quilt on his bed and stoked the charcoal fire to keep warm. He was about to light a lamp when a friend hurriedly arrived, inviting him to go for a drink. Dong Xiaxi locked his door and left with his friend. Together, they arrived at their friend's house, where many people were already gathered, including a doctor who was skilled in reading people's fates using pulse diagnosis. The doctor examined each person's pulse in the room, concluding with a grave expression. He then pointed at Wang Jussi and Dong Xiaxi, saying, I've seen countless people, but I have never come across such peculiar pulses as yours. According to your pulse patterns, both of you should have enjoyed prosperity, but ominous signs of misfortune also exist. You both possess pulses indicating a long life, yet the foreboding of an early death lingers. I dare not delve further into the reasons behind this. Nonetheless, Mr. Dong, your condition seems more severe. Everyone was astonished and pressed for more details. The doctor replied, My knowledge only extends this far, and I dare not draw any reckless conclusions. I can only advise the two gentlemen to be cautious in the days to come. At first, Wang Jussi and Dong Xiaxi were frightened by the doctor's words, but they eventually found his explanation vague and decided to disregard it. In the middle of the night, Dong Xiaxi returned home and noticed that the door to his study was slightly ajar, leaving him perplexed. He was quite intoxicated, thinking that he must have been in a hurry when leaving, thus forgetting to lock the study door. Dong Xiaxi entered his house, not even bothering to light a lamp, and reached into the bed covers to check if they were still warm. As his hand ventured in, he came into contact with what seemed to be a person lying there in the nude. Dong Xiaxi was taken aback and hastily withdrew his hand. In a state of alarm, he quickly lit a lamp and scrutinized the situation, only to discover an exceptionally beautiful young woman lying on his bed. She was young and stunning, akin to a celestial being. Dong Xiaxi couldn't help but feel elated and began to playfully touch the woman. However, he was met with the sensation of a long, furry tail. Panic washed over him, and he contemplated making a hasty escape. At this moment, the woman had already awakened. She reached out and grabbed Dong Shesi's arm, inquiring. Where are you going? Dong Shesi grew even more fearful, trembling from head to toe. He pleaded for the woman's forgiveness, but she smiled and said. What did you see? Do you believe I'm a celestial being? Dong Xiaxi quivered as he replied. I'm not afraid of your head, but I'm afraid of your tail. The woman chuckled and told him. You're mistaken. I don't have a tail anywhere. With that, she took Dong Xiaxi's hand and compelled him to touch again. To his surprise, her thighs were as smooth as oil, 
and there was no sign of a tailbone. She laughed and said, See? You must be so intoxicated that you're imagining things and falsely accusing others. Dong Shesi, originally drawn to the woman's beauty, was now even more captivated by her. His fear dissolved, replaced by self-reproach for his rash behavior. However, he still harbored suspicions about the woman's background. The woman explained. Don't you remember the little girl from your neighbors to the east? If we calculate, I've moved away for 10 years now. A decade ago, I was barely old enough to wear hairpins, and you were just a child. Dong Shesi suddenly realized and said, You must be Asua from the Zhou family, right? She responded, Yes. Dong Xiaxi smiled and said, Now that you mention it, I seem to recall. I can't believe how you've grown so slim and beautiful after all these years. But why did you suddenly come here? She sighed and said, I married a dull-witted man, and after four or five years, my in-laws passed away one after another. Now, I'm a widow, alone and with no one to rely on. When I remembered the people I knew from my childhood, you were the only one. So, I came to seek refuge with you. When I arrived earlier, it was already dark outside, and with the people who invited you for drinks arriving, I had to hide and wait for your return. I waited for so long that my feet grew icy, and my body was shivering from the cold. That's when I borrowed your blanket to warm up. I hope you won't be upset. Dong Xiaxi was overjoyed and took off his clothes to sleep with the woman. He felt immensely pleased. A little over a month passed, and Dong Shesi gradually became thinner. His family found it strange and inquired about the reason. He said he couldn't figure it out either. However, as time went on, his appearance grew even more haggard. Dong Shesi began to feel frightened so he went back to the doctor who was skilled at pulse diagnosis for medical advice. The doctor said to him, You have an eerie pulse. What I mentioned earlier about the omen of death is now coming true. I can't treat your illness anymore. Dong Xiaxi was terrified and burst into tears, refusing to leave the doctor's office. Helpless, the doctor performed acupuncture on him and applied moxibustion around his navel, also providing him with some medicine. The doctor advised. If you encounter anything, be sure to resist it with all your might. Dong Shesi became aware of the danger he was in. Upon returning home, the beautiful woman once again teased and flirted with him. Frustrated, Dong Shesi told her, Stop bothering me. I'm on the verge of death. He turned away from her and refused to look at the woman. The woman, feeling embarrassed and angry, retorted, Do you still want to live now? During the night, Dong Shesi drank some herbal soup and went to sleep alone. He soon had a dream in which he was intimate with the beautiful woman. When he awoke, he realized he had ejaculated in his sleep. His fear increased, so he moved to sleep in a different room. Dong Shesi's wife kept a light on, watching over him. However, Whenever he dozed off, the same situation recurred. When he opened his eyes, 
the beautiful woman had vanished without a trace. A few days later, Dong Xiaxi vomited a significant amount of blood and passed away in this manner. Now, let's talk about another scholar, Wang Jussi. On the day following Dong Xiaxi's death, Wang Jussi was in his study, reading. Suddenly, he saw a woman walk in. Wang Jussi was captivated by her beauty and ended up sleeping with her as if they were husband and wife. Wang Jussi asked where the woman came from, and she replied. I was Dong Xiaxi's neighbor. He used to be in a relationship with me, but unexpectedly, he was beguiled to death by a fox spirit. The fox spirit's malevolence is exceedingly terrifying, so scholars should be cautious and on guard. Wang Jussi, upon hearing this, admired her greatly and henceforth, they enjoyed each other's company. A few days later, Wang Jussi also began to experience mental confusion and physical weakness. One day, Wang Jussi had a dream where he saw his friend, Dong Shesi. Dong Shesi said to him, The woman you've been with is a fox spirit. A few days ago, she caused my death. Unexpectedly, now she wants to harm my friend. I've already reported my experiences to the Yama in the underworld. This time, I must find release from this grievance. Within seven days, please remember to burn incense outside your house at night. Don't forget, I implore you. Wang Jussi woke up abruptly, feeling bewildered. He told the woman. I'm seriously ill now, and I fear I may not live much longer. Some people advise me to avoid any further sexual activity. The woman replied. If someone is destined for a long life, even with sexual activity, they will live. But if someone is destined for a short life, they will die early, even without sexual activity. She then sat beside him and playfully teased him. Wang Jussi, torn by indecision, couldn't resist her charms and slept with her once more. Although he regretted it afterward, he couldn't bring himself to part with the beautiful woman by his side. The following night, Wang Jussi placed incense outside the door. When the woman arrived, she pulled the incense out and tossed it aside. That night, Wang Jussi had another dream of Dong Shesi, who reproached him for defying his instructions. A day later, during the night, Wang Jussi secretly instructed his family to wait until he had fallen asleep before lighting the incense again. The woman, lying in bed, suddenly exclaimed to Wang Jussi. Why have you lit incense once more? Wang Jussi casually replied. I don't know. The woman hastily got up, found the incense, and broke it, extinguishing it. She entered the room and asked Wang Jussi. Who taught you to do this? Wang Jussi replied. Perhaps my family was worried about my illness and believed some witch's words about dispelling disasters and exorcising evil spirits. The woman was discontented. The family secretly noticed the extinguished incense and lit another stick, placing it outside Wang Jussi's door. When the woman saw the incense, she sighed and said, it seems you are a person blessed with great fortune. I mistakenly harmed Dong Xiaxi a few days ago and now I've come to you. It's my wrongdoing. 
I will face him in front of the Yama in the underworld. If you can remember our past intimacy, please don't desecrate my body. Afterward, the woman reluctantly came down from the bed and lay lifeless on the floor. Wang Jussi lit a lamp and shone it on the ground, discovering that it was a fox lying there. Fearing the fox might come back to life, Wang Jussi quickly called his family and removed the fox's skin. They then hung the fox's body up. Wang Jussi remained seriously ill. One day, he vaguely saw the fox spirit approaching him, saying, I've appealed to the Yama. The Yama believes that Dong Shesi, driven by lust, harbored wicked intentions when he passed away. His death was, therefore, just retribution for his misdeeds. However, the Yama reprimanded me for misleading others. He took the golden elixir I had cultivated but allowed me to return to the living. Now, I've come to ask for my mortal body. Where is it? Wang Jussi replied. My family, unaware of the situation, has already stripped the skin from it. The fox spirit said miserably. Alas, I've taken too many lives and even dying today is too late. But your actions were quite cruel. With these words, the fox spirit departed, harboring deep resentment. After this incident, Wang Jussi also fell dangerously ill, and it wasn't until half a year later that he began to recover. In this story, the mentioned doctor is a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. In traditional Chinese culture, traditional Chinese medicine practitioners could diagnose a patient's condition by observing changes in their pulse, and some of them were regarded not only as healers but also as fortune tellers. Hence, in ancient times, Many traditional Chinese practitioners were given the title of immortals or sages. Of course, please regard the above content as a story and listen to it with a rational perspective. All right. That's all for today's ghostly tale. Dong Shesi. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please also encourage everyone to comment and share more. We'll see you in the next episode.